What's happening, Nerd Squad, and welcome back to Top 10 Nerd. We are here today, as you probably know, with another part three. We got 10 more alternate versions of the Cape Crusader coming right up. And if you haven't watched part one or two yet, that's totally fine. You can Tarantino it, start at the end, and then work your way back. It's all fun either way. I'm Taylor McWaters, let's just dive right in, shall we? Kicking off the list at number 10, we have The Murder Machine. Great name. In part two of this list, we mentioned the Devastator, so this time we figured we had to include Murder Machine as well. Bruce Wayne, coming from the dark multiverse, Earth 44, had the same origin with the parents getting popped and all that stuff. He became Batman, he joined the Justice League, but then when Alfred was suddenly killed in the Batcave by some goons, Bruce feels responsible. He watches the footage over and over and over again. It's haunting him. So at Alfred's funeral, Bruce asks Cyborg if he can help him create an AI Alfred. You know, to help around the house, set reminders, lock the doors, all that good stuff. Cyborg agrees and Alfred protocol is underway. Its job was to assist and protect Bruce no matter what. And he was built as a hologram, so he can use weapons and move stuff around. What could possibly go wrong? Day one, this thing was already spreading itself around, building new bodies, and then it started to take out every criminal in Arkham Asylum. Because they were deemed as threats, of course, so Batman had to adjust a few things, rightfully so. He wanted to allow AI Alfred to have access to the Batcave system, even though Cyborg was like, hey man, that's probably a terrible idea. But you're gonna do it anyways because you're Bruce Wayne. And he did. The AI first went after Bruce's mind because he didn't trust Bruce to keep himself safe. That's so meta. Then he took away Bruce's emotion, strapped him with some advanced tech, and once everybody was deemed a threat to Batman in some way, shape, or form, chaos erupted. A lot of death. Number nine, the Bruce. Coming from the Batman I Joker storyline from the late 90s, this Batman is known simply as the Bruce, which has a nice little ring to it. I say it like that, the Bruce. Once a year, the Bruce puts on a hunt. The citizens are now allowed to fight and challenge him for the throne. It's called the Knight of Blood. Great name, but they also have to fight Batman's villains first, the surgically altered and reprogrammed versions, of course. The Bruce controls them all though, that's the messed up part. He just likes this gladiator Halloween style knight. He just likes violence. Luckily, and I can't believe I'm saying this, luckily a descendant of the Joker came in and put a stop to the Bruce. And before we continue on with this list, if you wanna go ahead and give this video a thumbs up, somewhere in that area, that would be great. It really helps our channel out quite a bit. You guys are the best. Thank you for your constant support. Let's keep going. Number eight, Digital Justice Batman. James Gordon II is the grandson, of course, of the Jim Gordon. And after the death of his partner, Lena Schwartz, he sees some old newspaper clippings about the Batman and he feels inspired. He feels like going through his grandfather's stuff. He's learning more, he's grieving. And then that's when he discovers that Gordon left him the bat suit as well. Bruce Wayne's old bat suit, how lovely. You should probably probably wash it twice though, just, just to be safe, you know? So James took over as the Batman with NetWiz, Bobby Chang joining as his sidekick Robin. The two of them were recruited by the Batcom, which was a program set up specifically for this by the original Batman, in order to pass along equipment and tech and all that good stuff. This is a complex online future world that we're now looking at, of course ruled by the digital Joker virus. And I thought that paperclip guy was annoying. Imagine this dude. Jeez. Number seven, clone Batman. When Darkseid created a clone of Batman, he used it to make the world believe that Batman had died, when in reality, Darkseid actually sent Bruce back in time with his Omega Beams. That's a pretty impressive trick already, but things go up a notch when that clone is revived as a Black Lantern and seeks out our remaining alive heroes. His job was to attach other rings to other heroes who have been resurrected before, but after he was done, he went back to get some beauty death sleep. In Batman and Robin issue eight, that Batman Batman is revived using the Lazarus Pit, where he instantly attacks Dick Grayson, Batwoman. I mean, he's just going nuts at this point. He was strong, too. He was really strong. The next issue, the clone took off after King Cole triggered an explosion, and then he took off and headed for Wayne Manor, where he then fought Alfred and Damian Wayne. Just going for blood right off the bat. Pun intended. Damien was tossed off the roof by Crazy Batsy, but thankfully, Dick got him just in time. And in issue nine, the clone lost to Batwoman and Dick. Good ending, ish. Number six, The Doom That Came to Gotham. Written by Mike Magnolia and Richard Pace, Batman The Doom That Came to Gotham is a three-part Elseworld story where Batman's primary target is that of Lovecraftian monsters. Batman is in this 1920s era. He's rocking a Glock on the front cover. It's gritty, but the threat levels are cosmic. It's a fantastic blend. It's 1928. Bruce has returned home to Gotham a whole two decades later after his parents were killed. And he finds the city under attack from all these supernatural forces. It's wild. The way Batman handles these cosmic powers 
powerhouses, it's a ride. Even other players in the story are wild too, like Harvey Dent for example, his body started to deform after Poison Ivy touched him, and he was also chosen by Ra's al Ghul to be the living portal to Sotha's realm. Just goo into a wall of, yeah, it's just yuck. Number five. Bat Joker. This version of Batman came to life in the New 52 Futures End storyline, also known as the Joker Borg. Remember the mayor of Halloween Town and Nightmare Before Christmas? This Bat Joker is kind of like that guy. He's got business in the front and then villain in the back. So Batman created a time traveling device and sent Terry McGinnis, who I'll explain later on, into the past to prevent Brother Eye from being built by himself and Mr. Terrific. Batman was injured at this time, so Frankenstein took him, as well as the Joker, and then did some fun operation where the two became one cyborg. Batman's brain was literally picked apart here in order to find out where Terry McGinnis had been sent to, and then the Bat Joker was sent back in time as well to stop Terry. Bat Joker was heavily equipped though. He was loaded with super strength, so much so that this Bat Joker was amongst the strongest of the cyborgs of the end future. Number four, Terry McGinnis. Of course, we have to mention him now in case you're wondering, wait, who's this guy again? The year is 2039. Bruce Wayne had retired, but Project Cadmus director Amanda Waller was looking for a replacement for Batman, beginning with Project Batman Beyond. A major key element here was using the original Batman's blood samples left over after his fights and mix it in with some nanotech. Now we have the DNA, we just need a family to raise the kid. Amanda found the McGinnis household with Warren and Mary a perfect fit, as they were both psychologically identical to Thomas and Martha Wayne. One flu shot later, they were about to be the new parents of a new Batman. But obviously in Batman fashion, during Terry's teenage years, his father got killed, and Terry believed it was all because of the corrupt CEO, Derek Powers. So he asked for the help of the other guy part of this merger, that guy being, Bruce Wayne. He didn't know anything at this point. But after a confrontation against the Joker's gang, Terry realized, oh, Bruce is the OG Batman. So Terry stole all his stuff and suited up himself as the new Batman Beyond. What an origin story. So sick. We had to include him in this list. Not much, not so much weird. I mean, besides the whole, you know, flu shot, now I'm alive thing. Guess we can make that weird and include it. Number three, Owl Man. Coming from Earth 3, making his first appearance in Justice League Volume 2, Issue 23, Owl Man is actually not Bruce Wayne, but rather Bruce's older brother, Thomas Wayne Jr. See, instead of their parents getting shot, Thomas Wayne Jr. actually believed that they were doing such a poor job of managing their money, so he got Alfred to do it for them. He got Alfred to kill his parents, and then when young Bruce Wayne was trying to stop this horrible plan from happening, Thomas Wayne Jr. took out his own brother. He saw this as a sign of weakness. What a psycho. So with the family's wealth now, he became Owl Man. As a Cape Crusader, Thomas was, well, he was the worst. I mean, the guy didn't mind using deadly force, for one, he actually preferred it. And what's a hero without a sidekick? This world's Dick Grayson tagged along and joined him, but that was after Owl Man himself killed Dick's family. So a little bit of a twisted origin there too. And of course, there was also an evil super team, the Crime Syndicate. Number two. Azrael. So right after the 1993 Nightfall storyline when Batman got wrecked by Bane, his back was broken, but he decided to pass on the Batman mantle to not Dick Grayson, but instead Jean-Paul Valley, aka Azrael, aka Azbat. I'm gonna say this is a weird version of Batman because he's a little crazy. This run as Batman wasn't the same at all. His methods were violent, messy, and irresponsible. He was capable of defeating Bane with his new suit and stuff, so he did do a good job. He was a formidable successor in that sense, but definitely not permanent. Once Bruce did recover, he had to force Asbat to leave the position. Even the style changes were quite drastic, and honestly, kind of ugly. Dare I say it? Dare I say it was kind of ugly. He has the blue and yellow armor, the claws, the dual mag weapons. It's cool, but it's nothing like the Cape Crusader we know and love. He's kind of like a Decepticon. I'm like, eh, I don't really, like a Hot, hot Wheels Decepticon looking guy. Number one, the God of Knowledge. Weird, magical, wonderful, question mark? I don't, I'm not even sure what to call this one, but it's quite entertaining to say the least. The Mobius chair is the lazy boy of the galaxy. It made its first appearance in New Gods issue one, and the chair was created by the Anti-Monitor. He gave the chair to Metron, but at one point, Batman saw an opportunity of a lifetime. The chair was unused for a hot second, so Batman, king of musical chairs and problem solving, jumped on it and in turn became the god of all knowledge. How wonderful. At this point, the stakes are high. This couldn't have happened at a better time, honestly. The whole team was busy fighting Darkseid. Meanwhile, Batman's just floating in a chair in the background, figuring out the secrets of the universe, just trying not to throw up, trying to process all of this power. 
And that's when the Green Lantern adds a little bit of fun to this mix and tosses over his power ring. Just something to help Bruce get a grip. He puts it on Bruce's finger, power lights up the place, and he gets off the chair with a glowing lantern on his chest, right in the middle of the bat symbol. How crazy is that? Guys, you've been the best. Thank you so much for joining us today on Top 10 Nerd. Drop your likes, comments, anything you got in the bottom. Suggestions even for future videos, that would be great. Until next time on Top 10 Nerd, I've been your host, Taylor McWaters. I don't know if I just said that already. Until next time, see ya.